Hey, how's it going? I am back after a short hiatus. I had some shit come up that needed dealing with, and it just didn't really leave me with any enthusiasm, to be honest. So, uh, but yeah, but I'm much better now. Uh, this is kind of a response video from a while back to Bruce over at Punk's Not Dad, who one day decided to show some 90s records. And I got to thinking, uh, I bought tons of records in the 90s, and I have tons of records from the 90s, but I never show them. Uh, they're kind of neglected. So I guess this is as good a chance as any to show some off. And that's what I'm going to do. A bunch of 12-inch records from the 90s that I enjoy. Now, I went to a lot of shows in the 90s. I was very active at that point. Um, always makes me think of hardcore kids wearing ridiculously large pants. Um, I think of people bringing gigantic distros to shows, which I wish still happened, but I understand why it doesn't. Um, and I think of venues just reeking of vegan flatulence, like, ugh, it's stuck in my head forever. Um, oh, the memories. But, uh, but yeah, let's talk about records. 1990, Harbor City, California, which I believe is part of LA. Uh, Nemesis Records, it's reason to believe, when reason sleeps, demons dance. Super melodic. Straight Edge Band, um, they fitting with the, the West Coast Straight Edge Bands of the time. Bands like Instead and, uh, you know, the ones that New Age Records put out, like Outspoken and Free Will and whatnot. Um, like I said, very melodic, maybe a bit of a Discord Records, you know, influence to them. Uh, really, really good. Super catchy. Uh, I kind of wish this record had beefier production because it would have made it that much better, but it's still pretty solid as it stands. Uh, the singer, John Bunch, he went on to form Sensefield, who did some records on Revelation. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few years back, um, but he's left a pretty banging legacy. So, yeah, reason to believe. Staying in 1990, but going to New Jersey, got a band that, uh, in my opinion, kind of started a whole subgenre of hardcore, really. And that's Rorschach, Remain Sedate. It's on a uh, vermiform. This is what happens if a metal band decided to halfways alter their style to fit in with, like, My War era Black Flag, and then got a guy with severe asthma to do vocals. That's exactly what this sounds like. Um, the slower parts are gnarly and unorthodox sounding. The faster parts are just driving. Like, they'll, they'll push you right to a wall. Um, but yeah, great, great band. Um, very, very influential on, on bands that came after this. But uh, yeah, if you like metallic hardcore and you've never heard Rorschach, yeah, you might be into this. 1991, Washington State, New Red Archives, Christ on a Crutch, Crime Pays When Pigs Die. Fantastic band. Everything I've heard by them is great. Uh, this is straight up, no nonsense, hardcore punk. There's no metal to it. Uh, you got a singer who sounds like he's, you know, halfway between, you know, throwing up and just sneering angrily. Um, the drumming on this is over the top. It's one of my favorite drummers in hardcore ever. Um, but the rest of the band's pretty solid as well, but the drumming in this is, is awesome. Uh, I know Nate Mendel from the Foo Fighters was in this band. If anybody gives a fuck about that, but yeah, fantastic band. Christ on the crutch. Next, uh, 1991 still, but we're going to Belgium. Band called Nations on Fire. Strike the match. It's on, uh, Strive Music. Now, when I first heard this, it just sounded so different from other stuff that I was hearing at the time, and it just kind of grew on me, so I listened to the shit out of this record. Um, it's, it's fast, you know, straight-edge, hardcore-sounding music, but the singer sounds like Grover if he were doing vocals through a fan. It's just weird and strangely powerful and very interesting you know it just kind of caught into my head and i listened you know i listened to it a million times but great great band that no one ever really talks about now we're going to uh 1994 now bruce 
mentioned in his video, he showed this record and thought that I would have it, and he was absolutely right. It's dystopia. Human equals garbage. It's a three-way sp split release between uh, Misanthropic Records, Common Cause, and Life is Abuse. A uh, band from Oakland, California, uh, fitting with the, you know, the first-tier power violence scene. Um, but they're actually kind of more of a sludge band, really. Like, their their stuff's way more sludgy than it is fast. There are some fast parts to them, but but not as often as, as the super slow parts. The singer, Dino, sounds like he's, you know, in, in absolute agony. Uh, the lyrics are completely misanthropic, self-loathing, you know, probably more than I've ever, ever seen. Uh, never got to see this band live, unfortunately. Uh, I did see Dino doing vocals for Noothgrush a few years back, and he was he was great there too, but but I like Dystopia much more. Uh, all their stuff is, is really, really good. This is uh, an original pressing, but... This has been repressed and whatnot a, a few times, I think. All right. Orange County, California. This is uh, another one from 1994 and a total change of pace from what I've showed so far. Far Side, Rigged. It's on Revelation. Now, this this band played with a lot of the, you know, the Orange County, like, straight edge bands and whatnot. Um... Plus, they also had a kinship with Game Face, who were almost more of a pop punk band. But uh, this this really is just like college rock, like indie rock, but very well done indie rock. I don't like a lot of that stuff, really, but I really like this. Songwriting is impeccable. Um, lyrics are really good. Vocals are, you know, on point. Just a really, really good band. Um, I know Zach from Rage Against the Machine played guitar in this band at one time. But... Uh, but yeah, super, super good band. I like pretty much all their stuff. Saw them live once. They were killer. Um, but yeah, far side. Another one from uh, 94. This is one of the few fat records records that I own. Uh, it's Guns and Wankers. For listening and pleasure. Or for dancing and listening. My fucking thinking. Uh, this is a side project of the band Snuff, who I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, very, very good melodic punk. Um, eh, very sad, sacky sounding at times. Sullen and melancholy. I like that kind of shit. Very, very good. Um, they did three different seven inches. Like there was a punk one, a metal one, and a hardcore one. Um, this compiles two of those, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a compilation, but really, really good band. I, I like them more than Snuff. Snuff's all right, but I like these guys a lot more. So yeah, Guns and Wankers. British stuff on Fat Records. Now we're uh, going to 1995 <clears throat> on Equal Vision Records. Serpico, Feel Bad Rainbow. It's a band from Staten Island, New York. Almost a pop punk band, but there's still a bit of a hardcore sensibility there. I really like the guitar playing in this. Uh, he uses a lot of like a lot of pick harmonics and stuff, but he I just kind of like him. It kind of comes off cheesy sometimes, but enjoyable enough. Super super good. Vocals are you know on point. He's a, he's actually a really good singer. Um, lyrics very well written. Don't have any any complaints about it. Just a super catchy band that uh, I happened to glom onto in the '90s and listened to quite a bit, and I still like them. So yeah, they originally were called Sleeper. But the, the uh, British pop band Sleeper paid him off a bunch of money to take possession of the name and then ended up breaking up shortly after. So this band just, you know, went from Sleeper to Serpico, got a whole bunch of money from a band that went defunct and laughed all the way to the bank. Okay, time for a change of pace again. This is from 1995. Discordance Axis, Ulterior, their first LP. Band from uh, New Jersey, the grind coreiest of grindcore. Um, it's on Devour Records. You got, uh, you know, Dave Witte on drums, who's now in Municipal Waste. Uh, John Chang doing vocals, who went on to be in like Gridlock. I think he has a newer band now, but I can't remember what they're called. Absolutely crushing grindcore. The drums blew my fucking mind at the time. They still kind of do. Um, Guitar playing super discordant, as the name would 
would imply. Um, he's got the high vocals and the low vocals. Sounds like a dragon fucking, you know, doing battle with a fucking pterodactyl or some shit. Super, super, super good. Like, everything they do is fantastic. Pretty celebrated band. It's Gordon Saxes. Over to Germany. 1996. Acme. To reduce the choir to one soloist. It's on, uh, is it on Edison? Yeah, it's on Edison Recordings. Now, Germany had, at this point in time, had a huge metalcore scene. But metalcore was different. It wasn't like it is now, where it's like, you know, eyeliner, painted nails, and Justin Bieber haircuts. It was actually just hardcore kids playing super, super metallic hardcore. And this is a probably the best example of that. This record is absolutely crushing. Um, it's, it's like if you, you know, if Earth Crisis and Slayer had a baby, it would probably end up sounding something like this. Absolutely destructive record. I can't like this band more than I do. Super good. Now back to the melody. A band from Tampa, Florida. Hank Shaw, Nothing Personal. This one's on uh, Network Sound. Now, when I first heard this band, I thought the vocalist was a female, but it turns out it's just a dude named Harold. Um, very indie rocky again. They, they fit in with kind of like the emo scene in, in Florida at the time, which was, you know, pretty huge because of like no idea records and shit like that. Um, the guy's got a really, really nice singing voice. The, uh, the music, you know, it's, it's competent and it's, you know, it fits his vocal style. Uh, the lyrics are interesting. I, I like his angle on it. Like, they do love songs, but it's more like, it's not like, you know, I miss this person type love songs. It's more the vengeful love song without getting into the trappings of being a shitty incel. It's just, you know, I guess it's just honest. But, uh, you know, and a lot of ones about how he's a fuck up and that's just the way it is. I can appreciate that. So, yeah, Hank Shaw, really, really good band. Never gets mentioned. Now we'll uh, do some Canadian stuff. It's the uh, Acrid Left for Dead split 12 inch on, uh, on No Idea. Shaped like a buzzsaw blade. I think there was like six pressings of this and I think they were all shaped like that. Actually, I know they were all shaped like that. They were just different colors. Uh, Left 4 Dead, of course, from uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Saw them a bazillion times. Always great. Just angry, fast, pissed off hardcore that makes you want to, like, you know, kick down walls and, you know, just fight people. Um, members went on to be in Haymaker and The Swarm and Cursed and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Acrid from Oakville, which is in the greater Toronto area. Uh, people in there from Grade and Gates of Dawn and whatnot and the Swarm. Um, they were kind of more of a, more of a, almost a grindcore thing with some slight power violence leanings and kind of a, an early black metal influence to it as well. Um, pretty interesting band for the time because not a lot of people around here really sounded like that. So, uh, yeah, this was a killer record. I know tons of people that, that own this record, so evidently it was... It was well liked. So yeah, Left 4 Dead, acrid. Now we're in uh, 1999. Six weeks records. Capitalist casualties. Subdivisions in ruin. Love everything this band put out. They're from uh, the Bay Area in California. Santa Rosa, California, I believe. Uh, you know, fitting with the, the first wave of power violence, I suppose. They're really just a, an incendiary, super fast, like venomous kind of hardcore band. Super, super good. Um, very, very tight. Saw them live once. They just killed it. Um, two of their members have passed away in the last few years, which totally sucks. But uh, again, killer legacy to leave behind, guys. Capitalist casualties. Now to uh, Sweden. One of my favorite bands of all time. Totalitar. It's Sin Egan Motstandare. This is uh this is an original pressing. It's on Prank Records and uh, licensed from Finn Records. Um they fall under the D beat umbrella for sure. 
but there's just so much more to Totalitar than that. Um, there's like a rampaging kind of hardcore quality to it, uh, which makes it stand, you know, well apart from other D-beat type bands. Super fucking great. Um, everything they've done is awesome. I have a ton of it, and it's not a loser in the bunch. This was just actually repressed, uh, so it should be readily available for everybody. For now, it'll probably sell out quick, but uh, but yeah, one of the best uh, one of the best bands from the '90s on, in my opinion, Totalitar. And lastly, going to Arizona, it's a band that uh, a band that actually definitely influenced by Rorschach. It's UNRWA, setting fire to sinking ships. Much in the in the way of of Rorschach, like it's got that metallic black flag my war kind of thing going on but there's a there's a, a hearty influence of of stuff like tragedy in here like that sweeping kind of big sounding hardcore that uh that became so popular towards the late 90s and early 2000s and this is one of the better bands to do that in my opinion got a few of the records they're all great um i think i have most of their stuff actually but uh yeah band that never really gets their due, but everybody I know that knows them, loves them. So yeah, UNRWA, Setting Fire to Sinking Ships. It's on uh, Pessimizer. So yeah. So there you go. There's a, a video for you. See you next time.